We're in Alice Springs. <laughs> We're actually not in Alice Springs. We're like in a park just outside of Alice Springs. It's like a 10 minute drive. But. Found out uh, last night that we drove straight into winter. It was 37 degrees. Fahrenheit. I think that we're way too far away from the camera. No one can. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna. Okay. The reason why that's relevant, that it's cold down here as we've headed south, is that we're going to camp at Uluru tomorrow night. It's going to, I think the forecast is 32 or 34 degrees. Uh, but it was the only way, or like the cheapest way for us to be near it. Everything else was like Yeah, the hotels are like $500 a night AUD. Yeah. Anyways, to wrap that up, we spent yesterday just sort of preparing for that. But we've yeah. got one more day in Alice Springs. We came out to this park actually so that maybe we could um, put, up the, put up the drone to like show you guys what this city actually looks like. Before we came to Australia, I'm a little embarrassed to admit that I thought Alice Springs was at the base of Uluru. I did too. I thought maybe it was 20 minutes out of it. How long of a drive is it? It's five hours. And apparently a lot of people just fly from Alice Springs to Uluru, which is like, it's just crazy. I never thought about that. But uh... Oh, we're not going to do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're driving there tomorrow, like we said. Um, mm -hmm. Today there's supposed to be... Some kind of cool stuff actually close in Aussie terms. So uh, like an, an hour, hour away. Mm -hmm. But there's supposed to be a really cool Chasm? 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the Stanley Chasm walk. Yep. And it's gonna look like this. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's nice to be on our feet again, doing a hike and sub setting in the car. Yeah, my gosh. So this whole area is completely owned and operated by the local Aboriginal people. And they don't get any help from the government to maintain this place. So there was a, a fee, it was $24 for the two of us. Yeah, AUD. Which is like, so. it's still a great, that's a that's great That's pretty deal. reasonable, I think. And yeah. there's great facilities back here. There's a nice cafe. Mm -hmm. This whole, I know, I said this before, this whole area just like, it just feels like home. And it's cool that we've been around the world and we just find like little pockets of places that remind us of home. It feels kind of nice. Look at these things. We've seen them all over Australia, but they're so cool. It's like an ancient pineapple. pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> Two for scale. Oh. <laughs> it's just, un it looks like it should be so much smaller. Yeah, doesn't it? So cool. Do you guys ever hike with someone that stops to look at absolutely everything?
It's cool because all the voices echo in the canyon walls. And it's just kind of like a, a cool, whimsical kind of place. That's really neat. We were getting a sign that the sunlight, it's, it's orientated in such a way yep. that the sunlight only hits it for 90 minutes a day. So it's pretty chilly right now. That's beautiful. Yeah, that was really cool. It's a lot shorter than I thought it was. This whole hike is maybe 30 minutes. I think there's a way you can get to the top, which we're gonna go check out. Yeah. But at the back of the canyon there, the trail actually keeps going, but you have to start walking, uh, wading through um, a it's bunch like, of water. Mm -hmm. And there's a group of, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 uh, guys that had done the entire hike. And it's a 13 day trek that goes all through here. That would be. We should come back awesome. and do that one yeah, day. That I think seems awesome. We're next time we come back to Australia, we're definitely going to do that type of thing yeah. and just avoid the cities. Mm -hmm. That last little bit made it sound like I hate uh, hate the cities in Australia. Tia said, "That's not what I meant at all. It's just our preference is the outdoors." I'm definitely the HR of the two of us. I don't know. You think we're experienced walkers? How does? How do you even like start to to measure that? We have holes in the bottom of our shoes, does that count? Watch out for the glass. Well, we're in the outback for sure now. That was really weird. Like, how how does that even happen? That was a modern vehicle too. Looks like it just burned down. Yeah, because if it didn't, they would have cleared it by now, right? That must that have happened was really recently. Right in the middle of the road. Well, well, I'm awake now. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> uh, we're, we woke up super early today because we're driving all the way to... Um... Just hit a bird. Did These you? These little birds keep flying out. Oh. The rest, of the, the rest of the drive hasn't been this rough. <laughs> it's just the section. Yeah. We're ending up in Uluru today. Yep. But we got a very early start because we also want to check out King's Canyon. Yep. We looked it up and this is supposed to be completely sealed. Shoot. We're gonna put the drone up uh, and see how far this dirt road goes. Because we don't want to kill Blueberry. Yeah, and there's a hundred miles between us and Kings Canyon. Potentially. It's all dirt road. Everything we read said it was sealed though. Maybe it's just the southern? The southern route sealed. I don't think we can go down that road. Man, what a dumb mistake. Okay, so we turn back and drive a couple hours the way we came? Yep. We're back in Alice Springs, 
getting the gas to replace everything that we just wasted on that extremely long detour. Um, yeah, so I bet the Australians out there are kind of laughing at us about this really silly mistake. And we are too. That was... Ugh, gosh. <laughs> ah. We did see that you can go from Alice Springs to Kings Canyon to Uluru on sealed roads. What we didn't see is that it's certain sealed roads and the route that we took, uh, yeah, obviously it ended. So uh, today kind of turned into a nine hour travel day and we won't make it to Kings Canyon today, obviously, but uh, yeah. I would love to hear you guys in the comments tell us what your biggest travel blunder has been because it, it'd make us feel better. There it is! Oh my gosh! Oh my god! That's all one rock? Oh my god, it's huge! We made it. Uluru. Oh my god, look at this! It feels like we've unlocked something. I can see why people call this the heart of Australia. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It is, it is truly way more amazing and large and everything than I thought it would be. You know, the pictures do not do it justice. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to be this impressed, but man. There's a trail that you can take that goes all the way around the rock. Um, but the park is actually closing in what an hour or mm -hmm. two so i think we're gonna go try and watch sunset and then do this hike tomorrow morning we're out here looking a little ridiculous <laughs> i want to get a time lapse of it <laughs> but prepare yourselves for the best sunset shot you've ever seen in hindsight i may have overcommitted to uh, this time lapse hopefully it turns out okay the sun's about to set <laughs> Our neighbors are grill have a hole in barbecue right next to us, and I'm really jealous. I'm very envious right now. I mean, they set up like a table and chairs, and they really thought it through. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just got here, but this is the most majestic thing I think I've ever seen. Absolutely incredible. I'm so happy we got here in time for sunset. Mm -hmm. Got down to nearly freezing last night. We stayed warm. Got gas at this place next to uh, next to our campground. Two fifty-five a liter. That might be the priciest we spent. I don't know. It's really remote here, though. I can see why. T is in here getting something to eat, and uh, we got a big hike today. What'd you get? I got you a hot coffee, and then I. I'm not saying I broke the machine, but the machine broke, so I got a cold iced coffee for me and some egg rolls with bacon. All right, my darling, what's the game plan? Um, coffee first. I'm sorry, I'm still waking up. I'm like defrosting. You know those turtles that come out of hibernation? They like they move like this. That's what I'm like right now. I just told everyone that we stayed warm, and you're like, oh. I'm defrosting. Um, <laughs> I guess I stayed warm. We're gonna go hike around Uluru today. Um, there's like a base. The you can walk around the entire thing. Yeah, like the whole base of it, which is awesome. And I think it would take us like an hour or two to do. And then there's also another set of rocks that are pretty famous called Kata Tujuta. I don't know how to say that. Kata Tujuta. And we're gonna go to those two and then wait. 50 kilometers, how far is that? It's like a half hour. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, then we'll go do some stuff there. Yeah. We're going to stay in the area for a bit. 
I just cannot get over the sheer scale of this thing. It's huge. whole texture of Uluru changes every couple minutes like it was really smooth then it was like incredibly textured and then now it's just like full of holes and every image I've ever seen of Uluru was like always kind of from afar and I always thought it pictured it as like this really smooth rock but it's just it's not like that at all it's really neat the vibes here and I'm not usually the type of person to talk about this but the vibes here are just unlike I think any place I've ever been yeah. I don't know if it's because of how flat this desert generally is and you just have this giant monolithic rock or what it is, but it all sort of comes together to feel really just special, I guess. Mm -hmm. As we've been walking, the sun's getting higher in the sky and it seems like the color of the rock changes um, depending on how the light's hitting it and it's just, I don't know, it's really cool. It's really relaxing. A few times on this trail so far, there have been signs saying not to take pictures or film in between these certain points because parts of these, the rock is still incredibly, I mean the rock itself, but um, sections of the rock uh, have a lot of significance. But they likened it to like religious scripture. Mm -hmm. So it's similar to a lot of other religions throughout the world. It's fairly common from what we've experienced where you're not allowed to film inside really significant buildings and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And this is almost the equivalent yeah. Or at least that's how it's been phrased to us, and I find that very fascinating. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We've been seeing signs for these Segway tours, like way back in Dolly Waters, for like a thousand miles. And I didn't think they were real, but they are. <laughs> What would you call it? Like rivets? Rivets? Mm, waterways? Yeah, that's the word. That when, when it rains, it must look like the whole thing must turn into a waterfall. Ah, I just, I don't even know what to say. I'm sorry. I'm just so excited to be here. All right, you guys, I'm going to say at least one person has been waiting for this the whole video because we've been waiting to do it. Mm -hmm. Two for scale. <laughs> oh, wow. Parkour to you. <laughs> He's afraid to cross the street. There she is. There's Tia. And there is Uluru. Yeah. Certainly the best, biggest rock I've ever seen. What do you think? Biggest rock we've ever seen, by far. <laughs> biggest tier for scale, I think. Eiffel Tower. Well, this is way bigger than the Eiffel Tower. You think? Volume-wise? Well, I meant by height. So in most areas, the trail is, what, 50? to 200 feet away from the rock, mm -hmm. but this is the only area you can get really close to it. Am I allowed to touch it? I think everyone else is. Yeah, I'm going to touch it. All right. Wow, wow it's cold. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. Oh my god. It's a water hole, and it says on the sign here that it's one of the most consistent places for water in the area and you can still hear water trickling down from the top of Uluru. You can just feel something here. There's everyone that's coming through to look at it 
instinctually lowers their voices. There's no sound or anything. Even There's no signs or anything saying that. Mm. But even the kids start whispering. It just feels like it has the same feel as a religious site, like a church yeah. or something. I know I keep saying that today, but you just feel like you want to be quiet. Uh, it's so cool. I just, yeah, that's awesome. Haka Juta, mm -hmm. um, which I'd never heard of actually, but it's what, maybe 25, 30 miles away from uh, Uluru? Yeah. And it's less of a uniform rock apparently, but it has like more different formations and stuff. Yeah, more bulgy. Can I say that? I feel really ridiculous right now. The sign said, or the thing we read said it was good for uh, picnics. So I'm carrying a plate of PB&Js and it's actually a kind of a long walk so I feel like I look ridiculous right now. Oh my god. Okay. So, here is Uluru. Way over there. And Takajuta. Wow, it is significantly larger than Uluru, it looks like. Yeah. What an awesome overlook. <laughs> this has such strong Lion King vibes to it. Everything this one over light here. touches. This I think be favorite movie, by the way. Of everywhere that we've been in Australia, this place exemplifies the vastness the mm. best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. We were a bit bummed about not being able to complete the circumnavigation, but this is completely worth it. I'm so glad that we turned around. Yeah, me too. It's really neat for me because growing up, my mom talked about this place all the time. And she actually backpacked Australia in her 20s. And she just like was this Japanese person who didn't speak any English, came here on a Greyhound bus and just like explored Australia. So it was just, it was, it's really cool to like walk in the footsteps of like my mom. Yeah. Yeah. That's the cool part about travel, I think. We're gonna eat our sandwiches, and then we're gonna go check out Takajuta, mm -hmm. but we're gonna call it here. Thanks for coming with us, you guys, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Subscribe. Okay, now I gotta walk. Hopefully this shot's cool. Sugar ants. I thought they were like mean ants. They're all mean, all ants are mean. No, they're not. Are you kidding? Have you ever met a nice ant? Don't want to touch that. What? <laughs> Don't! It's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Nothing on me. Chvio keeps saying, you're almost there to everyone who passes. And that doesn't really work when the, the walk is only like 10 minutes each way. <laughs> oh man, I love him. He's feeling so self-conscious right now. It's like, oh sir, you want your peanut butter and jelly on this overlook? <laughs> Like, it's kind of ridiculous. The smallest PB&Js, like this half mile walk. I'd be more, feel better if they were like bigger sandwiches, you know? This umph, that small, this little... <sighs> Never mind. I don't know. <gasps>